Welcome back into the Original Gangsters Podcast. I am Scott Bernstein. I'm here for a, a really, really quick hitter episode. We're only going to be about five, ten minutes at most. But I want to augment or, or give a companion uh, piece to the Philadelphia um, new mob leadership episode of the OG Pod that we got out right now where we go over uh, you know, the shifting hierarchy in that family with the incarcerations of, of handsome Stevie Mazzone and uh, – uh, Dom Grande, who who went away in the last couple months, and 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 the leadership of that group needing to uh, you know reformat how that organization is going to be run for the next couple of years because Grande and Mazzone are going to be away for the next five years. Um, we talked about Mousy Massimino, Damian Canalicchio. I mentioned uh, Joey Merlino's brother-in-law, Joey Bonfiglio, uh, but I did not really get into you know the OG himself. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Chang Changalini, who is going to be from, from what I'm hearing in South Philly is going to be, is going to play a big role in overseeing this, uh, you know, shuffle in the hierarchy. And that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be a part of the administration. Uh, I think there's a good chance he will, but that, I think that still remains to be seen, but, uh, he is one of these kind of straws that stirs the drink with the Philly group. Uh, universally respected, not just in Philadelphia, but across the country with different crime families. Uh, you know, if you've been watching us and if you follow this stuff, you know that the, uh, the, the Changalini name is, is mob royalty in, in Philadelphia. Chicky Changalini, R.I.P. Chicky. Uh, he died earlier this year, 88 years old, and uh, was just the walking embodiment of what it meant to be an OG in this world out of Philly. You know, had three sons. We talked about it. They were on opposite sides of a war. Uh, last man standing in the Changalini, Changalini family is Johnny Chang, the oldest brother, the the one who's probably over the years has been the most level headed. Um, he's a, a true mob diplomat, very close to Joey Merlino, the reputed boss of the Philly family. And I think Joey, who's out in Florida, and then his his reputed acting boss in Philly right now, Georgie Borghese, they're going to be leaning heavy on on Johnny Chang in in this re restructuring of the packing order uh, i think it's very possible that johnny chang slots in to a conciliary role uh, i mentioned um uh you know possibly a faffy who i think had been uh you know an acting for for joe legambi for uh in spot duty on and off the last couple of years but i i from talking to some more people i think it's very likely that johnny chang slots in the conciliary role Possibly he come back to underboss. He was underboss in, in the 2000s for a while, had to step away for some health concerns. He's been a couple since the 90s. But uh, he is somebody that, again, is just uh, very savvy when it comes to gangland politics. He is, you know, can seamlessly interact with various factions, not just uh, within the Philly underworld, but in, you know, in the New York Five families. From what I'm told, he, he represents uh, Philadelphia in New York with the five families, uh, travels a lot to the Big Apple and, and takes meetings with uh, guys in the Genovese, guys in the Lucchese's, more recently guys in the Gambinos. Uh, and he's just a very integral part of the way the Philadelphia Mafia is going to operate going into the future. He's about 67 years old. And uh, again, just a guy that a lot of people like, a lot of people trust, other than uh, Joe Legambi, I would say, from talking to, to authorities, talking to people on the street, there's nobody that Joey Merlino relies more on for counsel and advice than Johnny Chang. So uh, I didn't want to overlook uh, Johnny when we were talking about what's going on in Philly right now. I think I referenced him a couple times in, in terms of some of these new guys, uh, who they're, some of the younger guys, who they're moving with. I said that uh, you know Joey B has been seen quite a bit with Johnny Chang over the last couple of years, with Uncle Joe over the last couple of years, and it's not uh, it's not a huge jump to understand why one of the groups that Johnny Chang's been seen meeting with over the last handful of years is uh, the Queens Gambino crew is where uh, Joey B you know traces his roots to, but uh, and then we know from some other people, including friend of the show John Panisi. That when Panisi was on the street, he used to have uh, Lucchese bosses uh, use him to to deliver messages 
to Johnny Chang for Johnny Chang to, to deliver uh, to Joey in the admin. So uh, keep an eye out for Johnny Chang. He's the OG. Everybody loves uh, Johnny, and I think he's he's going to be um, a major factor in how this family looks going forward, whether or not he's he's sitting in one of the top three spots or not. Uh, and, it, and if he doesn't sit in one of those spots, it's by choice. It might be related to the health issues or just that he doesn't want to be in the fray. But right now, he's being relied on to, to help uh, this musical chairs of a, of a situation you know, to get everybody in the right spot and get things moving in the right direction. So we'll see you next week for uh, uh, another full-length edition of the OG Pod. I'm Scott Bernstein for Jimmy, who uh, will be back next time. And for Ben Behind the Glass, I'm out. Thank you.